Hi everyone, uh, I'm Jyotsna and uh, I'll be presenting on this topic you known called as how to accelerate your DevOps processes using cloud native technologies like AWS, Azure and Docker. In short, I will be talking about uh, what does we mean by cloud native DevOps. So before we begin, let me quickly introduce myself. I'm Jyotsna Saroha and I am DevOps lead at Aeon. I've been working uh, from past 12 years in IT, and uh, I started my career from Accenture as a build and release engineer. Back in those days, DevOps was not a term very well known. It was just coined, and I have seen the evolution of DevOps term and then its culture and uh, I'm very happy that I have got this opportunity to share my experience about implementing cloud de native DevOps, how we implemented it at Aeon and what are uh, lessons learned while implementing it. So uh, I'm based out of Toronto and uh, that's about me. You can reach me out on LinkedIn at this link. So. The agenda of my talk is very simple and straightforward. I'll be focusing on the three elements of cloud native DevOps to make you understand what it is. So the first and the first and foremost thing that I'll be discussing is what do we mean by cloud native DevOps? Then the how part of it, how we implement it in Aeon and how an organization, what are the best practices an organization can uh, follow to implement it uh, for your use cases. And the next uh, is the why component of it, why it is important to move to cloud native DevOps. We, uh, so these are the three main uh, topics that I'll be covering uh, on during this talk, right? So let's dive in, the try to understand what, what what is cloud native DevOps? So most of us are very familiar with the term DevOps already. We have been working in and out. Most of the projects are moving towards DevOps practices. But what does we mean by cloud native DevOps? What is this new buzzword? So to understand cloud native DevOps, let's break this down into two pieces or two words, I would say. One is cloud native applications and DevOps. When we want to implement DevOps practices for cloud native applications that holistically call as a cloud native DevOps processes. And by cloud native applications, what we mean are those applications which are built with having agility and scalability in mind, which are built with those services which are very loosely coupled and independent as well. So those are, that's about cloud native applications. What about DevOps? As we all are familiar, DevOps is a culture where operations teams and developers teams has this opportunity, has a kind of ecosystem where they can work together throughout the SDLC. So if you are trying to implement a continuous integration, continuous delivery practices for a cloud native applications, that means you are trying to do cloud native DevOps. So that is cloud native DevOps as in terms of definition. But if we have to understand what it composed of, so as it at its core, a cloud native DevOps basically consists of five uh, pillar or five foundational pillar, I should say. So if you are trying to implement cloud native DevOps, these are the five elements that you need to be having or into your consideration during the implementation part. So first and the foremost thing, you need to have a cloud native application. And when we say cloud native application, these applications are usually consist of microservices, which are a reusable component on in it. And because these are reusable component, that means it brings the ability to easily integrate these applications with any cloud environment. Right. Having said that, we understand, okay, cloud uh, native applications have microservices as a building block, but why microservices are so important. Microservices brings um, 
simplicity to your architecture it provides your fault isolation which means that you can make a changes to one small component of the complex application without impacting the whole application itself you can go to market with that particular change without impacting or testing the whole components of it right so it thereby increases your factor called as time to market when you implement an application with microservices right so microservices are basically give you an ability to scale independently and you can iterate very quickly when you are making use of microservices architecture so the next important thing that you need to implement is to have a ci cd ecosystem in place of course whenever there is a term devops been used ci cd is always in the picture right continuous integration continuous deployment why because it gives you an audit trail of about your changes that you are making to a to a software it from starting from pull request to going straight to production you know where when and what is happening you have your developers will have a continuous feedback about the changes that are happening so that is on the conti continuous integration and deployment part there are few more components that you need to consider that is having automation in place having monitoring and logging as well in place so automation there are uh, unlimited scope of having automation in place in devops practices and uh, in this particular scenario it always makes sense to have automation in place in terms of iac it could be by using terraform it could be cloud formation whichever you are comfortable another thing that you need to consider is having monitoring and logging in place so uh, just uh, not just a ci cd process but you should consider having some uh, logging in terms of uh, it could be an event driven log it could be system log it could be um, uh, it could be your application performance monitoring log because when you enable logging and monitoring you are actually increasing the maintainability of that application because you get to know okay, what problem has happened in past and you can monitor the status of your application so the performance of the application will improve significantly when you have these components in place and the next component that i want to stress here is containers so containers are again very important if you are trying to implement cloud native devops why because containers are great enabler of a cloud native devops or cloud native application we know that containers not only make the application lot more portable because you are baking everything in and packaging it as an image that image will have the code its runtime its dependency everything so first thing it brings the portability to your application and the scenario that we want to achieve that it works on my machine it should work on production can be easily achieved using containers technology like docker having docker into picture not only that containers are very lightweight as we all know and it gives you a layer of abstraction where the application will be independent of the os or the runtimes right and uh, it will have environmental consistency across your dev prod and um, different stages that you have in your uh, sdlc right apart from that it helps it's like uh, it makes your application lot more transparent and you everyone will be using the same image that is deployed in lower environment so that is the main point of having containerization in place the next and the a very important thing that uh, is uh, that comes into picture when you are making use of container is to have some control plane in place and the most popular one as we all know is kubernetes so kubernetes as we know is a container orchestra orchestration technology and these container orchestration technology could be kubernetes it could be aks it could be eks it could be ecs so all these container technologies will actually helps you to monitor the health of your containers 
it will help you to scale up scale down your infrastructure your it will help you to manage your resources in a cluster very efficiently so it always makes sense to have a container orchestration in place and the next and the last but not the least and the very basic thing that you would need when you are trying to adopt to cloud native devops practices is to have uh, cloud native infrastructure as we all know we have a different choices to make we could adopt to a private cloud we can adopt to public cloud we can um, we can have hybrid cloud how we have it in aon and you you have different options to choose from it could be aws azure um, and google cloud as well so a cloud native infrastructure is for sure is what you need when you are considering towards making a shift towards a cloud native devops practices so um, since we have covered what it is at its core the next thing that i want to talk about how we the how component how we implemented this particular cloud native devops processes into aon and i will be talking about two different use cases as i mentioned we are making use of aws as well as azure so i want to first talk about how our pipelines look uh, uh, our pipelines look like for uh, ECS and A Amazon uh, use case. So as you can see, um, this is the complete picture of our uh, CI/CD pipeline. We are making use of Bitbucket for version control tool, and uh, we are having for CI/CD. We are making use of Team City and Octopus Deploy. Apart from that, uh, we are making making use of docker uh, reg container registry which is hosted in uh, our central binary management system jfrog artifactory and for con container orchestration we are making use of ecs so all the components that we discussed in previous slide you can completely see the way we have implemented it in our ci cd ecosystem right so as soon as developer is ready they push their code to uh, our uh, version control system that is called as uh, Bitbucket. It's an Atlassian product that we use. Once the code get pushed to Bitbucket, it will get built by Team City, which is our CI CI server, and um, it make use of EC2 instances, and it uh, then stood up the container over there. It executes the test on these kind of, uh, instances. So as you can see, we are making use of AWS infrastructure EC2 instances for doing our builds. And once the integrity of build get tested, everything looks good, those Docker images will get pushed to a container registry and which is hosted in Artifactory. And it will sit there to get consumed, right? Then uh, simultaneously, Team City will also, once this build process get finished, it will notify the Octopus Deploy, which is our continuous deployment tool, that an image is ready for deployment to different environments. And what Octopus Deploy will do, it will make use of a custom step, it will make use of multiple steps, including one custom step as well, which then updates uh, the task definition for ECS and make ECS aware uh, about this new image. Once ECS get task definition get updated, ECS will automatically understand which manage which is managing these microservices instance and task instances that the currently deployed image is out of date and a new image is available. It then pulls the image from the Docker registry and then push those image and those applications will get automatically updated uh, and uh, upgraded as well. Here we are making use of uh, Airflow. Uh, though ECS do have scheduling capabilities with it, but we are making use of a Airbnb product that call us our Airflow for doing a job orchestration. So as you can see in this pipeline, the five elements that we talked about having microservices in place, 
then having a CI CD service, a CI CD ecosystem in place, doing Docker builds, and uh, then having a control plane like ECS, and of course, uh, overall AWS cloud infrastructure. So this, uh, why I'm presenting is to give you an idea how a typical pipeline in this scenario, if you are making use of this tool, um, will look like. So moving forward to the next use case that is cloud native devops using azure this is another pipeline that we are we have implemented but it is making use of only azure services like azure devops azure key vault and azure file store aks clusters so let me take you through this in this particular flow as well so as you can see um Again, it will it has all those components. It is making Docker images, building Docker images, pushing to a central uh, Docker container registry, which is hosted again on JFrog Artifactory. So let's begin. Uh, whenever a developer is ready, they push the code to Azure repos. Azure repos are mostly Git based here in our uh, company, and then it triggers the build and a build pipeline in Azure DevOps. The build pipeline obviously goes through all the usual stages like get the source, install tools, build solution, run test, make a Docker build and publish the artifacts. One additional step that you can see over here is that we are making use of X-Ray. X-Ray is for vulnerability scanning and the, these builds which are there for Azure use cases are basically making use of Docker and uh, want to have security in place as well. So we have integrated our build pipelines with X-Ray, which is again GFrog product and helps you to identify your security vulnerabilities and notify you if there is any violations, right? Once this image is baked, uh, it will get pushed to GFrog Artifactory for consumption. It will then, this build pipeline will have a trigger that it will trigger the Azure release pipeline, which will be responsible for then pushing it to different stages that we have. So uh, it will again pull the Docker image from JFrog Artifactory. Here you can see we are making use of AKS. Uh, in previous use case, we have talked about ECS. Here for orchestration, we are making use of Azure Kubernetes services. And this Azure Kubernetes services is being stood up using Terraform uh, scripts, right? So these uh, that particular image, which got first pushed to dev environment, it will uh, basically get the same image will get pro promoted to all this different en environment finally to production. So that's what I want to highlight that you have a build integrity and when you make use of containerization technologies in place. The next thing that I want to highlight uh, for this use case is the kind of um, the kind of services or the backing services we are making use of these in these pipelines. So it will give you a bit more insight about on the system itself, the CI CD pipeline. So in Azure DevOps, the build and the deploy pipelines are making, making use of service connection when they have to talk to either Artifactory or EKS clusters. So they will use these service connections for making, um, for communicating with the EKS cluster or these different services. So that is one thing. And another thing is that in this EKS cluster, it is a Aeon private cloud. So is it, Aeon is your private cloud. That means uh, these worker nodes are basically hosted in our uh, uh, cloud and uh, we are making connection using customer managed services, which we are storing these keys uh, in Azure vault. Apart from that, as you can see, whenever a deployment get triggered, it will basically creates a Kubernetes services and also creates an ingress resource. And a user can again make a uh, make connection to this by you through an Azure load balancer. So these are uh, the different kind of services or the backend services I should say that we are making use of our use case in Azure pipeline. 
so i hope i could have uh, shared you the this insight um i want to share what are our takeaways um while implementing these uh, different use cases in aon the first and foremost thing you need to scope scope uh, your transformation very um, efficiently you should not take everything at once you should iterate you should make progress in stages right that makes sense to your organization like if you can go fast but it it's always advisable not to take or consider everything um in a go then uh, when you have to do such kind of transformations uh, from the de normal devops to conventional apps monolithic apps to cloud native dev applications of course you need to have some time boundations and for that you need to consider an organizational constraints on the changes that you can do to those applications because your cap might restrict your changes so there must be some there might be some upcoming releases so all these things that you need to consider the next thing that you need to consider is you need to make a strategic decisions about you first has to understand your current landscape and you need to make the decision whether considering transformation for this use case makes sense or not so if you are having a product that is not releasing frequently not weekly not monthly maybe quarterly or by uh, or, or yearly then in that case it doesn't make sense to have this transformation but of course if you are releasing very fast if you are very agile if you want a scalability for your applications and uh, if you are making changes if you want to increase the frequency of your application releases then of course these are uh, this is the right process that you should be leveraging you should make use of a center of excellence at how we are making use of at aon because it will help you to lead the change more uh, seamlessly across organization so these are our key takeaways from our journey at aon so i have covered the how part how we implemented how what are our takeaways and how you can implement devops uh, cloud native devops in your organization so let's understand why when uh, when we are using this buzzword called cloud native devops why it is gaining so much importance in market because all the um, all the organization want a digital transformation they want to move fast they want to remain stable as well so cloud native devops brings that stability as well as agility into picture every company now understands that there is lot many advantages from moving your infrastructure from on prem to cloud it helps you to do your cost optimization it helps you to remain compliant it helps you to scale up down and scale down your infrastructure at a go so considering all the goodness of cloud that you can leverage apart from that the if you want to release frequently if you improve you want to improve your time to market and if you want to have continuous monitoring in place with uh, all that uh, thing that can only be delivered through devops processes so of course it makes a lot of sense to business teams to adopt to a cloud native devops because it brings lot of value to your organization not only that it has been a prediction that by end of this year 80% of companies will increase their adoption to cloud centric infrastructure and applications if this is a trend and if we understand that there's lot of benefits in moving towards cloud native applications it always makes sense to adopt to the cloud native devops practices and that completes the why part i hope i would able to answer your queries or uh, your uh, curiosity would able to feed your curiosity around this topic and uh, i'm and i would like to uh, thanks uh, for attending my talk and if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me on linkedin and thanks a lot